He's not wrong. Clash between Squirt is piss. Old-fashioned values in a modern made-for-reality TV scandal. Don't downplay this, especially after what you guys have done in the name of Christianity and God to other people. This is a spiritual issue. This is a, a character a, issue. Jim Bob told police Josh had been disciplined. The family presented itself as the perfect all-American Christian family. 19 kids and counting, the Duggars. Audio warning at 1755, what does that mean? Let's talk about reality TV, more specifically TLC. Originally established as The Learning Channel in 1980, over the years TLC became the ultimate hub for the most strange shock. It never stopped being The Learning Channel, okay? It teaches people so many things. We've learned so much from the learning channel. Fucking and disgusting forms of television. Oh my god, including the Cussy episode. Who could forget? Oh my god, Jobri, friend of the show Jobri, starting off strong, literally showcasing the learning channel's absolute fucking best. The best of the best, dude. Wow. Wow. Incredible you could ever be so unlucky to witness. I love sniffing and chewing dirty diapers. It has to have pee in it. Whether it be My Five Wives, Buying Naked, or the 90 Day Fiance Universe. My inches are where it counts. I personally can think of no better way than to end my day with a nice cold beverage and a brand new episode of Cougar Wives. See, over time, a TLC discovered- Yeah, there was a car rapist. Man, we have watched so much weird shit on this fucking broadcast, dude. When I think about, like, God damn, we used to, we had the 90 day arc, we had the car pussy arc. Yeah, there was a car rapist that's, like, not even a joke. That's actually unironically not a fucking joke, dude. Like, literally. I mean,. And throughout all of those fucking years, dude, at the top of the hour, there was a three minute ad break and all of you that subscribed were able to watch it uninterrupted. You know what I mean? Whether it was the depraved world of the Duggars or if it was any number of different things that we were watching on the learning channel, you were able to get a wall to wall uninterrupted broadcast experience by subscribing for $5 or for free at the top of the fucking hour. Now, of course, there were other methods like uh, getting gifted a sub as well. But unfortunately, to all the plebs who are not subscribed, you will be going to the Shadow Realm, a.k.a. the Ad Realm, right now for three minutes. Let's continue. For the catering to audiences' morbid curiosities is what would ultimately benefit their bottom line the most. The truth is that TLC will broadcast just about anything without a second thought as long as it gets ratings. But this story starts King Ghidorah, thank with you for a the five the family out of northwestern Arkansas, a popular reality TV show depicting Arkansas Jim Bob uh, Duggar's journey and raising a grand total of 19 children. Angela Brooke, thank you for the five get the subs, allowing ten people to along to the ads. Over the eight years they spent on K Wait, hold on. How's everybody reacts to Strange Love My Car is My Lover documentary? That was a year ago, dude. One yield. Casprite, thank you for the five gifted subs. Imam in London. Thank you for the five gifted subs, Imam in London. My lord, dude. A whole last year has passed since we watched that fucking depraved shit, dude. Cable TV, the Duggars not only broke records in terms of ratings, but became a spiritual icon for all to bear witness. Growing up in a Christian household myself, I actually spent a fair bit of time watching them with my family. Even at 11 years old, I was never the biggest fan and thought they were a little odd at times. Oh, man. Yeah. But back then, my underdeveloped child Katiti, brain thank had you no real subs. reason to suspect anything more sinister was at play behind closed doors. Alan Abbey, that thank is you for the until five a series of scandals that rocked not only the entertainment world, but the spiritual community as well. A disruptive wave of rumors, negative media attention, and poor crisis management that ultimately ended with the oldest sibling, Josh, being found guilty of some of the most detestable crimes imaginable. 
imaginable. Going from an ideal picture of American purity to now serving a 12 year sentence in federal prison. Join me as we look back at one of the most disturbing timelines in entertainment history and comb through the many- Matt Walsh did defend this guy, by the way, famously missteps that allowed a monster like Joshua Duggar to get away for so long. Jobbery with the beats. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Bespoke Post, being one of my channel. You may have one or two siblings, but could you imagine having 18 brothers and sisters? No. Well, that is part of the reason America became so intrigued with the show 19 Kids and Counting. Jim. I think part of it is because, like, Amer as Americans, we are all pieces of shit, right? Like, straight up, let's call a spade a spade, okay? We're fucking, we're all pieces of shit, okay? In, in many respects. We're just, like, overall kind of bad people, Okay? And one of the one of the things that pieces of shit love to point to is like people who are somehow even bigger pieces of shit than they are. So I think that's why we love this kind of television where we're just like, it makes us feel a little bit better about ourselves. When you watch the Duggar family, you're like, well, they're fucking freaks, but like I'm totally normal. Miss Melzi, thank you for the five get the subs. And I think that's pretty much it. That's where that fascination also comes from. Tom Hecker, thank you for the five get the subs as well. I'm Bob and Michelle Duggar. Yes, the original Duggars are here to talk about their ever-growing family and some big news that just came out for the family. James Robert Jim Bob Duggar was born on July 18, 1965 in Springdale, Arkansas. Raised by Jimmy and Mary Duggar with one older sibling, the Duggar family didn't start with much. Jimmy being described by his own family as a weak spiritual leader of the home, with Jim Bob attributing much of the family's early circumstances to his father's poor handling of finances. Damn, they fucking but own him, dude. But by a private Christian school and becoming a regular at Sunday service, Jim Bob grew to possess strong religious values from a young age and was a heavy participant in church activities. Going door to door, uh, visiting yeah. potential church members, okay. a friend uh. of Jim Bob suggested he pay a visit to a young girl by the name of Michelle Ruer a cheerleader who had recently been converted to the faith. Coming from a more secular background than Jim Bob, Michelle was born on September 13th, 1966, and was given way more personal freedoms than any of her 19 children would have. Michelle's early life was much different from the one she'd live as an adult. She wore pants and tells a story of mowing her lawn in a bikini as sort of an example of how secular she was, I guess. She even has a- I fucked up. Jesus won't forget that. You're going to hell. Lesbian sister who she no longer associates with. <laughs> no idea why that may be. Though Michelle once enjoyed regular childhood activities and friendships around the time Jim Bob came knocking at her door. After leaving her house for the first time, Jim Bob said a prayer and later claimed it was love at first sight. While Michelle didn't even remember the encounter. They were actually going on church visitation. And from the moment I saw her, and heard her talk, she was just such a sweet girl that at that point, I prayed that she could be mine. I don't remember that first meeting. But that's okay, because the two would have another chance to get to know each other. When 17-year-old Michelle applied to work at a yogurt shop where Mary Duggar was the manager, Jim Bob was finally able to invite her to a high school banquet, and the two discussed the Bible for hours that night. Before long, they began dating and officially got married in July of 1984. Early into their Sorry. marriage, the Duggars were actually less traditional than you may think. Unlike today, the Duggars once watched TV and even used birth control at one point. Getting what? off the pill to have their first son Joshua before switching back onto the pill and Sinful. getting pregnant again. This time resulting in a death. Wait, did you say so he groomed her? Got it? Wait, wasn't he also like fucking 19? What do you mean? Pretty sure he was also a kid, dude. They were like the same age. Like they went to the same high school, man. Calm down. Like, no, he's a piece of shit for other reasons, okay? Devastating miscarriage. And I ended he up was, getting Oh, he was not. He wasn't even, it wasn't even 17, I think. He was 17, 18. While on the pill. And we ended up losing that baby. And at that point, we were so grieved about this. We asked a Which is also grooming, of course. See... 
the irony of like talking about grooming while well, we're talking about the Duggar family, it, when you're when you're hyper focusing on the 17 to 18 problematic age gap, you're kind of like uh, casting a very wide net on a group of individuals who actually did do some really fucked up shit. You know what I mean? Uh, that wasn't it though, you fucking idiot. That wasn't the thing that was like problematic. But you'll see what the problematic stuff is. Doctor and he said, yeah, sometimes a pill will allow you to get pregnant, but then it can cause a miscarriage. And as we start studying the Bible, and the Bible says that children are a blessing and a gift from God and a reward from Him, we just really felt like that we need to give this area of our life to God. Attributing the tragedy to birth control, the Duggars swore off contraceptives altogether and began having baby after baby after baby after baby. And another one, and another one, and another one, and before we knew it, we had so many little ones and just two of us. And, and I think we began to go, oh my, what do we get into? It got to where Michelle would be giving birth every 18 months on average. Despite the plentiful health concerns, Jim, Bob, and Michelle had decided the number of children they'd have would be left up to God himself. A philosophy in line with something called Quiverful, a theological movement that encourages women to bear as many children as they physically can. The name Quiverful coming from Psalms 127, which reads, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. While it's more of a movement than a religion, those that follow Quiverful think of having kids as building God's army. They put heavy emphasis on traditional family values and reject much of the secular world. Women are never to disobey their male authority figures and should always support them no matter what. Even Michelle herself has gone on the record saying women should always be available for sex, even when they're tired. While the family themselves reject this label, many still categorize the Duggars as quiverful anyway, considering their track record of historically supporting the Christian patriarchy group Vision Forum, attaching a link to quiverful.com on their website, and having cited the aforementioned Bible verse as to why they have so many children. But maybe the semantics don't matter as much, because all you need to know for now is that Jim Bob and Michelle were building a massive family under God. And after having 12 children by 2002, it was safe to say Michelle had her hands full in the house, especially with Jim Bob away working a full-time job in politics. And Michelle would have days where she would call me and say, I'm just overwhelmed, the house is a mess, I can't get anything done. And it was very overwhelming. See, starting in 1999, Jim Bob was a proud member of the Arkansas House of Representatives, serving as vice chair of the Judiciary, House Corrections, and a Criminal Law Subcommittee, which is really not what we're here to focus on. I bring this up because in 2002, Jim Bob decided against running for re-election of his House seat to instead pursue a position in the United States Senate, where he and his many children would be famously photographed on their way into the polls on a election day when he lost to incumbent Tim Hutchinson. So Jim Bob's political career kind of fell flat after that election, but that's okay because thanks to that viral photo, a brand new opportunity was waiting right around the corner. And this is James Duggar and this is Justin. You say hi. And Bro, that fit is, see, that's what I'm saying. See, that is right. That That's what you're looking at, TradCast, okay? Being a track cat is not about getting fucking turf bangs after you, you know, graduated from Juilliard and smoking cigarettes and fucking, you know, saying that uh, women belong in the kitchen. That's some real fucking track cat shit right there, okay? You're, you're a goddamn pilgrim at that point. You're churning butter, baby. You know, that's what you're doing, okay? Women should be seen and not heard. Women should be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen shit, okay? They're not on fucking TikTok. And I'm Jim Bob, and this is my wife, Michelle. Welcome to the Duggar home. Catching the attention of television producers, TLC's sister company, Discovery, reached out to the family to shoot a 40-minute TV special. Your parents children. wanted to be them? What the fuck? Why? That's so weird. I don't understand why anybody looks at this fucking thing and goes, man, that's me for real. Oh, man, I really want that. That's... 
That's what I want for myself and my family. Like, that's very strange, dude. Pregnant again. Airing in 2004, the documentary explored the unorthodox methods Jim, Bob, and Michelle used to raise so many kids under the same roof, highlighting the specific day-to-day -day struggles the family faced. Things like long lines to the bathroom, how they prepared so much food, and how they delegate various chores to each child. As you'd expect, every I think what, was extreme. What I don't understand ever with these like groups of people. What the fuck? I hate when I do this. Oh, there it is. What I don't understand with these groups of people is like, what? How are they making money? Like, how? How did he make enough money? Like, what? Is our Kansas that cheap to live in that you can have 18 little shits and just fucking still operate? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. I never understand that. Every single time we watch a fucking TLC show on here, I'm always like, how the fuck does this guy have a house? Okay. Like half of the dudes that are on TLC, first of all, they don't make a lot of money off TLC for the record, especially in the first season. They're getting paid like $500 an episode. But like all these fucking like dating, uh, you know, 90 day fiance motherfuckers, like they always have like a house. And it's so strange because it's like, but, but you don't do anything. And you're out of your fucking mind. Like, how, how do you have, like, a, a consistent job that you're, like, paying for your house and, and you got no house payments? Like, what the fuck? Where's the income? I, I don't understand it. Extremely orderly, keeping tabs on every child's tasks with this giant chart and making sure that everybody pulled their weight, so to speak, by implementing a buddy system. As Jim, Bob, and Michelle couldn't be around every child all- 18 kids is a massive tax refund every year. Man, that doesn't matter, dude. The income alone to fucking keep afloat 18 children is like not enough, okay? You could pay zero taxes, okay? He's already in Arkansas, you know what I mean? But you guys are crazy. You, you're like, you're making it seem like it's super cheap, like medical bills and food and all this shit. Like, I don't get it. I, I genuinely don't understand how you could feed 18 fucking mouths. All the time, the older siblings were assigned a younger buddy to look after. The system was that immediately after a baby was weaned off breastfeeding, they were handed off to an older sibling who tended to all of their basic dietary, educational, and even hygiene needs. Making what? sure they got dressed and fed, as the family grew, the older Duggar girls took up most of these responsibilities, while the Duggar boys became occupied with work outside oh, the child house. child labor something. Eventually, the oh. family got so big that the oldest daughters, Jill, Jana, Ginger, and Jessa, yes, they all have J names, I'm surprised I'm not in the family too, were given an entire group of what young siblings to look after, placed into teams that were based on a rotation. Babies being assigned to their group is sometimes before they were even born, like in the case of their 19th baby, Josie. Being born prematurely, she was passed along to Jana once her medical issues had mostly stabilized, which meant to Jana happened to be watching over her during one of her apparent seizures. With their parents out of town, Jana and her grandmother were left frantically trying to get through to paramedics, all while the camera crew stood by and filmed everything. This could have well been Josie's last moments on Earth, and TLC chose to get up close shots of Jana panicking, unsure of how to appropriately navigate a life or death situation. A traumatizing moment only amplified by the presence of a camera crew. Luckily, Josie was finally able to get help, but needless to say- Bro, TLC is crazy, dude. It's like, you know the fucking age-old, like, journalism ethics question of, like, if you see a child that is in a line of sight of, like, a shot, do you take a photo? Or do you, like, step in to, like, stop it from happening? TLC's like, no, we're always taking the shot. Actually, as a matter of fact, we're putting a fucking bullseye on the kid. Make sure that they, like, actually kill the kid, you know? It's wild, dude. Ruthlessness.
This is all a lot of pressure to put on one family member who isn't certified in dealing with such medical emergencies. It's this kind of built-in exploitation on top of an already questionable buddy system that's garnered plenty of rightful criticism online, with some pointing out the negative implications of siblings being required to parent each other through a process commonly known as parentification. Now, I am by no means an expert on the subject, but certified psychotherapists like Mickey Atkins have gone into detail explaining the various downsides and long-term effects of assigning adult responsibilities to children. Very common for children who were parentified to grow up and become adults and then realize that there's a lot of identity development that didn't happen to have this moment of like, oh, I don't really have an identity of my own and like I don't really know what I like or what I'm interested in. I never got the chance to explore those things because I was so busy being a surrogate parent to somebody else. And I think there really is, again, increased odds for these kids to end up with a disadvantage in terms of developing their own identity and having the opportunity to really explore. Like, who am I as an individual? As far as education, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's, a, it's a major predicament and it's really fucked up, but god damn does it make good content. I'm such a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Fuck, I totally understand why motherfuckers watch this shit though. It's just like... I don't know goes, the Duggars homeschool each and every one of their kids under what's known as the Advanced Training Institute, or ATI. Established by Bill Gothard in 1984, the ATI is an offshoot of the Institute of Basic Life Principles, or IBLP, which, trust me, we'll definitely be getting into a little bit later. All you need to know for now is that the ATI is basically a homeschooling curriculum that uses random, cherry-picked Bible verses to teach reading, writing, in math, which are all included in these helpful little pamphlets called wisdom booklets. These booklets that you can freely access yourself online contain teachings on how to dress modestly, how to style your hair, the sinful act of winking at people, and stop dress modestly. At least they, at least they were like, hey, if you want to get that turf bang shit, get that out of here. You know what I mean? That's a little weird. What, what's that about? That's just racist, I think. They're like, no natural hair. Nope. None of that shit. Notice how it's only sinful for the female to wink. I mean, yeah, there are definitely fucking double standards. <laughs> I'm I'm beginning <laughs> chatter who just joined just now. I'm beginning to sense a double standard between the way men and women are being handled in this Christian cult. Hmm. Guys, I don't want to make any irrational decisions here and pop off, but like it kind of feels like it's giving anti-women. How to style your hair, the sinful act of winking at people, and of course, one even attempts to explain why God allows sexual assault to happen by blaming the victim. To Gothard, assault happens as a result of immodest dress, indecent exposure, being away from parents, or being with evil friends. These educational principles are crucial in understanding the Duggars' traditional lifestyle. We don't want to stir up. Okay, I'm... I'm beginning to think that they're definitely, definitely a little anti-feminist, I think. Desires, different things that um, cannot be righteously fulfilled. Where the girls don't wear pants and are encouraged to keep their hair long for the Lord. Even the men are required to dress modestly with the entire family wearing pants to a marathon. You could pick out our boys pretty quick because our boys were the ones in pants and everybody else had shorts on. The family doesn't watch- What? Like, when you're doing athletic shit, you still need to wear pants? What the fuck is that? That's weird, bro. That's a weird thing. That is a weird thing.
TV, which is ironic because duh. And as musical as they are, provocative dancing is something to be cautious about. We try not to shake body parts around. There is no alcohol in the Duggar household. Tattoos and piercings are off limits. And as you can imagine, premarital sex is heavily frowned upon. Just like front hugging and kissing, which are reserved for when you tie the knot. Did you say at some point that you had practiced with your hand? So I was thinking, you know what? I wonder what it feels like. So I practiced on my hand. I think practicing on my hand was just to see what it felt like. The Duggars also don't exactly date. They court, which means all Wait, front hugging? So does that mean back hugging is allowed? Like, what the fuck does that mean? So you can hug someone from behind? What? Side hugs on- Oh, I didn't even think of that. I forgot that there is a separate type of hugging that you can do from the side. I was just immediately thinking, like, you just, you just hug someone from behind is very weird. Dates are accompanied by a chaperone, sometimes being a much younger sibling. The boyfriend must always get permission from the girl's father before making things official, which isn't totally out of the ordinary for some families. But what is a little more unusual is Jim Bob sending 50-page questionnaires to his daughter's potential boyfriends. It's on the 45-page application. <laughs> Page 27, section B. Do you think he's joking? Bro, you can't be that horny, dog. Get the fuck out of here. There's other women in Arkansas, man. That's crazy. You t you're telling me you filled out a 50-page questionnaire to be with these women? What the fuck? Get out, dude. <laughs> Homie had to do the fucking ACT, dude. <laughs> what did you, did you have to study for it? He had to, like, do after-school programs to, to make sure... He could date the, the the Duggar family daughters. Everybody did the the thirty page what questionnaire. The, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Wait a second. Jim Bob made you guys fill out questionnaires. <laughs> he that is were... not kidding. Yes. Yes, yes they did. Yeah. I got sent a fifty page questionnaire. I sent it back at one hundred five pages. These strict guidelines. Okay, that's fucking insane. Like, especially because like some those dudes look like they'd be the hottest dudes in Arkansas. Like, I think they were just, like, in it for the clout, maybe. Like, there's no fucking way, you know? They just wanted to be on TV, probably, right? How Mr. Beast met How his new meet girlfriend? Jimmy? Jimmy was coming down to South Africa with Logan Paul, Casey Neistat. They had a video they wanted to film in Antarctica. They had to cancel the video and stay. Is this person... Wait, wait. Mr. Beast has a girlfriend? in South Africa a little bit longer. So obviously that's where I am. Logan forces Mr. Beast to go out for the night and Mr. Beast goes out into the wild, into a club and they're just sort of chilling there and one of my friends stumble upon them. And I said, okay, I will leave the house. I'll, I'll join you guys for a quick coffee. If I must. Yes, if, if you force me to. <laughs> I was also very curious. Like I, I knew of Mr. Mm. Beast. I knew the great things he was doing. So I got there and he was super nice very down to earth i thought i was boring him but anyway i got home and i got a dm from him and uh he decided to come back a second time to south africa this time to visit me instead why is his girlfriend he has a girlfriend i did not know this but why the fuck would his girlfriend call him mr beast <laughs> that's kind of weird <laughs> what the fuck uh, Mr. Riz, yeah, dude, that's the international Riz. He made her do a questionnaire. Wait, really? Lines are used to promote a higher standard for romantic relationships, especially when it comes to sex, which the Duggars have always spoken pretty candidly about, with some of the daughters even alluding to the night their brother was about to have it during his wedding. He's gonna have love marks yeah. all over him, but he won't mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> In a particularly strange and uncomfortable moment, one of their non-religious cousins, Amy, even attempts to teach Josh how to kiss just hours ahead of his honeymoon. It's your first kiss, so like- What? Um, I need to give you some pointers. As oh, yeah? As what to do. Yeah. yeah? Since I've kissed a couple of boys in my lifetime. It was all weird when it first aired, and it's especially weird now, knowing the full context of Josh's- Bro, that's like, this is a porno. Yo, why are all the most religious motherfuckers, like, also the craziest, dude? I mean, this is like, there's no fucking way, dude. 
There's no fucking way. The unsavory history. But for T. Like, he just, she just went, I'll teach you. That was a bad cut, though. It cut to, it cut to illegal Riz again. Oh, and knowing the full context of Josh's unsavory history. But for TV networks, the weirdness made for great entertainment. So Discovery- Some people are on speakers, asshole. Bro, that's the beauty of that fucking sound. If anyone in your near vicinity knows immediately off of just the jingle alone what you're looking at, you're in the club already. What are they going to do? Call you out for it? Like, okay, well, they're a fucking pervert. Like, the fuck do you mean? That's just a self-report. Oh, your mother is near? Oh, she's going to know what that jingle is? Okay, well, you know, that's awkward for you for multiple reasons now. Really? Unilad, Mr. Beast says he put his girlfriend through the test when he first met her. What the fuck? Like a Mr. Beast test? What kind of test? Dude, this website sucks. I can't even fucking scroll down. Gave the Duggars three okay, more we'll look at that later. specials throughout 2006. Before long, they had become quite the media darlings, winning over the hearts of religious and secular audiences with their lovable, wholesome image. To the point where they were even invited on the Oprah Winfrey show for an interview late that year. An invitation that was swiftly rescinded once Oprah received an anonymous pee. tip from a woman alluding to a darker side of the Duggar family iceberg three times he told jim bob duggar what he'd done his dad brought him in and he was also there with the church elder and it didn't just happen once that's according to a police report obtained by in touch magazine according to a 2006 police report published by in touch magazine nine years later oprah winfrey canceled an appearance with the duggar family after a 61 year old woman reached out to harpo studios warning producers of the eldest son joshua and his then a rumor track record of abuse within the family's own home. The studio's response was to contact the local authorities, who opened up an investigation, interviewing several family members that December. While Jim Bob did everything he could to protect his son from questioning, Springdale police still conducted interviews with several other key family members. The timeline, as documented by authorities, began in March 2002, where the police report indicates that Jim Bob, or James as written in the document, was first approached by one of his daughters who accused Josh of touching her inappropriately while she slept. An accusation that, as the report outlines, Jim Bob did nothing about. Not until several months later, when Josh came forward himself and confessed to his father what he had done, confirming the allegation made by his younger sister. It was here that Jim Bob was said to have disciplined Josh on his own terms. What that means exactly, I'm not sure. But it's important to note that he still refused to contact the police or anyone outside of the family for that matter. As far as we know, Jim Bob remained dedicated to keeping this a family secret at all costs, even if it meant Josh's behavior would continue, which it did. As the report goes on to state that Jim Bob was made aware of several more incidents of Josh fondling a young victim as he read to her on his lap, the police report confirming four of Josh's five victims to be his little sisters who had an age range of 11 to 5 years old at the time of the incident. A fifth victim was understood to be a family friend. Bro, that is friend. fucking insane. Like, I walked away to take a piss, and this dude has done, like, literally the worst sex crimes that you could possibly do. Like, literally, I, as soon as... What the fuck? Why did you walk away? Man, I didn't fucking know this was the point where he was going to start talking about this shit. It's fucking insane. Like, there is no, there's no solution to this guy. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do about this guy. Straight up. Better link one minute oh, he explains about his test. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Also underage at the time and younger than Joshua, who was around... Yeah, Mike Huckabee defended him, so did Matt Walsh. 14 when this all took place. By March 2003, Jim Bob finally decided to take action by going to the church. And after conferring with the elders, it was determined Josh needed some kind of treatment program. It was only then that Josh was sent to a Christian-based facility, which included what the report described as hard physical work and counseling, although Michelle would later admit to police that Josh had not seen an actual counselor. As opposed to 
was seeking genuine oh, punishment or rehabilitation for their son, Jim Bob and Michelle decided to send Josh away with, quote, a family friend who was in the home remodeling business. Which, when I think of a counseling program, my mind doesn't typically jump to things like carpentry. See, the Duggars have long been tied to a religious organization known as the Institute in Basic Life Principles, commonly abbreviated as the IBLP, with a history of isolating its members from the outside world, threats of severe punishment, and authoritarian control, the IBLP has been labeled a cult by other Christian denominations and even former members, being spearheaded by Minister Bill Gothard, who served for many decades until being forced to step down in 2014 after he was accused of sexually assaulting and harassing at least 34 women and working to cover up the systemic abuse of children within the organization. While the IBLP promotes Bro, when a fucking Christian leader is forced to step down, know that, like, the amount of fucking rape that they did is so biblical that, like, even the church is like, bro, come on. You got to fucking chill out, dude. Holy shit. Like, it's like a cop killing too many black teenagers. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a part of the job description. You're most likely not going to get in fucking trouble. But, like, you've done it so many fucking times, like, that they, they have to write you up at that point. Like, that's insane. rigid familial roles, a patriarchal system, and shielding children from anything unholy, many have criticized the organization for not accurately teaching things like sex education in its mandatory homeschooling curriculum, ATI. One former student, John- Hasanabi, this is not all Christians. If this was my church, you would have reported the police immediately. Man, I've never said this is how all Christians are, man. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not a fucking r slash atheist. I talk about this shit all the time. I, I talk about how religious people are not a fucking monolith. Okay, calm down. Cornish alleging, I remember that Gothard was basically telling us that sexual abuse wasn't all that terrible because it only affected one's body and not the more important parts of our being, soul and spirit. This warped message has left some teens and children without an understanding of what sexual assault is, perpetuating a climate of vulnerability that the leading figures have been known to take advantage of. And as Cornish continued, for the thousands of families in the ATI program, Gothard would be the first place they would turn, which is exactly what Jim Bob did. Bill Gothard himself even recalling speaking with Jim Bob and Michelle personally after the incidents took place. He says he was the one who suggested Josh be sent to a godly mentor. So when Josh arrived at the Little Rock Salvation Facility, a now defunct IBLP training center, he was reportedly made to help renovate an old VA hospital the IBLP had recently acquired, in addition to carrying out laboring tasks, he was also assigned one-on-one -on -one faith based counseling to cleanse him of any sex-related impulses. In I mean, this dude is literally like, holy fuck. The dude he went to for therapy and counseling is like gonna teach him what? Like, he's gonna teach him how to level up, I guess. He's like, listen now, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure you kick your game up to a new notch. You know, you're not you're not doing it right. In relation to what exactly Josh was taught there, Gothard stated the endocrine system can be just gonna learn how to do it better, I guess. So what the fuck? Throughout our body, and they are affected by our sexual drive. Lust can have a positive or a negative effect on the body, depending on what it's for. God designed us to have an attraction to the opposite sex for marriage, but whoremongers will be damaged by their own system. Like the age. ATI, the lessons here prioritized the Bible while discouraging science, the arts, or philosophy, according to former student Micah Murray, who was raised by IBLP teachings from 1st to 12th grade. Gothard had painted a world that was out to destroy families and then humbly volunteered to show us the way to safety, he claimed. Before becoming disillusioned by the cult-like tendencies Gothard espoused, Murray was fairly involved at the Indianapolis Training Center, describing having to wear suit jackets at dinner every night, not being allowed to talk to girls, and having to get a request form signed in order to go out and get fast food. Calling the IBLP a disaster for family units, Murray recalled depression, marriage is falling apart, and sexual molestation occurring throughout the organization. While Murray wasn't too surprised when the Duggar incident came to light, Gothard maintains the backlash demonstrates an attack on Christianity, and the critics are merely out to discredit and destroy the religion 
nation as a whole. But how did any of this even land in Oprah's inbox to begin with? Believe me, there's a lot of stuff that was confessed that night that hasn't even been out in public anywhere. In addition to confiding in church elders, Jim Bob and Michelle also shared Josh's confession with some close family friends, Jim and Bobby Holt, two names that I'm sure won't make this story any more confusing. The Holts knew the Duggars through church and had a daughter, Kaylee, around the same age as Josh, who were said to have been courting at one point, their parents even expecting them to get married one day. All of that changed, though, when the Holts learned of Josh's activity. Stop unrelated to the fucking matter in hand but what hold on married one day all of that what the fuck is that bro? what the absolute fuck was going on here my man what the fuck were you doing what what the fuck what is that what the hell is that it's like it's not even bangs like what what You may know us from our recent testimony against our former best friend, Jim Bob Duggar, to ensure that justice was served for those most vulnerable among us. We are not strangers to taking tough stands. We have found Brian King to be a man to take those tough stands, too. He is someone who will fight for our freedoms no matter what the cost to him. Brian King is on our side though when the Holtz learned of Josh's activities, cutting off the relationship with the family right then as Bobby would later testify in court. At the time, Josh's abuse didn't reach others within the church though until Kaylee wrote a private letter to her favorite author, detailing what she had overheard from Jim, Bob, and Michelle. Although she didn't end up mailing the letter, she did end up placing it in a book that was later lent out to a fellow church member. And that is how everything leaked. The information causing a divide within the congregation some church members took the Duggar's side while others were appalled at what they considered. That is some old school ass shit, bro. That is crazy. They're like literally in the 17th century still. Like in, in every way. That's crazy that she... What? That's an insane, insanely considered to be irresponsible handling of a serious crime. Though it's worth noting that Jim Bob did go to police after Josh returned from his little three month IBLP vacation, after Joseph T. Hutchins gave Josh a quote, very stern talk in 2005, he refused to press charges, letting Josh off the hook easy as long as he promised to be good, I guess. Which we know how that ended. To make matters worse, by 2006, the statute of limitations in Arkansas had already expired, supposedly. And Josh was let off the hook yet again. Oh, what's that? You're wondering what happened to the state trooper? Arkansas, you think we care about statues? Only statues we care about is statues of, of heritage, not hate, brother, okay? Yeah, he was arrested and convicted of possessing child porn himself, sentenced to 56 years in jail for very similar charges Josh would later face. So that's- Who isn't doing this in, in the state? What's going on, man? What, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is happening, dude? kind of what we're dealing with here. Back in the early to mid 2000s though, rumors of Josh's behavior were starting- Arkansas chatters, get out if you can, man. Holy fuck, dude to reach more people. First members of the church, then Oprah, then surfacing on early discussion forums online. All while the Duggars were given season after season of their own show by TLC, growing their brand and becoming a prominent staple in the spiritual landscape. People close enough to the family definitely knew of a secret, yet Josh's past remained nothing more than hearsay until 2015, when the Duggar family empire shattered. I'm Josh Duggar, the oldest of 19 kids in County, and and uh, welcome to the Duggar home. Through an FOIA request in 2015, In Touch magazine managed to obtain the redacted 2006 police report that confirmed the rumors that had been floating around for years, prompting everyone in Josh's proximity to swiftly enter damage control mode, including the network. TLC pulling its top rated show from the airwaves, which eventually led to a permanent cancellation by summer 2015. Oh no! Oh. What a bummer, dude. What a, what a bummer. That's crazy. 
Oh, no. Like, what the fuck were you... Like, TLC was riding for them, which is insane. 15. The Duggars released a statement that day which read, With God's grace and help, Josh, our daughters, and our entire family overcame a terrible situation, found healing and a way forward. We are so pleased with the wonderful adults they have all become. It's important to stop here and note that the family's statements addressing what happened were all predicated on the assumption that Joshua was now a changed man, someone who sought forgiveness from God and moved on to become a better person person in a statement of his own bro how the fuck did this guy get a second chance i don't understand like i'm all for rehabilitation but there is no point in his life there is no point in his life that this man give any indication that he like even felt bad for his crimes he was never punished oh trigger warning take cruise He was also as a conservative celebrity all over the fucking conservative network, which is why Matt Walsh fucking defended him, by the way. Ah, burn it with fire. When he wrote, my parents took several steps to help me address the situation. We spoke with the authorities where I confessed my wrongdoing and my parents arranged for me and those affected by my actions to receive it counseling. At the time, he claimed to have been forgiven by Christ and those he had wronged, emphasizing how thankful he was for God's grace, mercy, and redemption. His wife, Anna, went on to add that Josh's counseling changed his life and that he continued to do as he was taught, justifying her decision to marry Josh despite knowing of his past on account of him being someone who had gone down a wrong path and had humbled himself before God and those whom he had offended. Someone who had received the help needed to change the direction of his life with the power of high- The oldest kid in the Duggar family was like literally a, a, a fucking psycho rapist, okay? Like, he, he was just like raping his, his sisters, like including like five-year-old. Okay, including his five year old sisters. And then instead of like dealing with that through therapy, counseling, all this other shit, or even like the legal system, every person that was involved in the matter basically covered it up or they sent them over to the fucking church where they where he got like the best rapist training to do better rapes. Like literally, they sent him to a fucking cult or a sect where the guy, the lead guy, was also uh, imprisoned or, or you know he was also a rapist Hindsight, of course, you and I can obviously see the unfortunate aging of these statements. But at the time, his healing was a sentiment being echoed not just by him and his wife, but even Jim Bob and Michelle, who sat down with Megyn Kelly for an exclusive interview on her former Fox News show in This is like, this is what I don't understand. Why are they like rehabilitating this family's image too? Like, what the fuck? What is the problem? Like, what is the fucking problem with... Uh, with media that they're just like we gotta we gotta have these guys like there wasn't another fucking insane family with like maybe 15 children like you had to go with the 19 child family like there's plenty of fucking there's plenty of Jim Bobs out there you know but they were like nope this is the one we gotta make sure this family is the one that we defend June 2015 in a response so bad it was described as a shocking and horrifying spectacle did you ever worry that the treatment didn't work, especially with so many young children in the house? Sharing nervous glances throughout the 40-minute ordeal, Jim Bob and Michelle attempt to... He also looks so scary. I don't know what it is. He has a very scary look about him. Like, maybe it's the lack of eyebrows or something. Maybe it's like the tiny eyes, but it's just like... I can't even look at him straight. Like, he's got some demon in him, dude. Reassure audience members that these incidents were in the past and that everything was handled in the most responsible way possible. But this line of defense could only go so far, with Megyn Kelly asking even the most surface level questions. What would make you launch a reality TV show about your family, given this past? All this had been taken care of five years before. We had nothing to hide. We had taken care of all that years before. We had no fear because we hadn't, we, everything was taken care of. And that was a suit, uh, that was a, that was actually a sealed juvenile record. We had all 
<laughs> resolved it, it had been forgiven, we moved on with life. It doesn't take long to see that most of their support and empathy lies with their son rather than their daughters who had been abused. In fact, the entire interview reeks of Josh sympathy. But he was still he was still a kid and he was still a juvenile. He wasn't an adult. There was a couple more times that he came and told us what he had done. This was not uh, rape or anything like that. This was like touching somebody over their clothes. Mm -hmm. There were a couple incidents where he touched them under their clothes, but it was like a few seconds. Jim Bob had somehow managed to downplay Josh. And I mean, the people he's talking about, the victims he's talking about are also his daughters, but I guess he's got like 19, so he doesn't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's weird, man. You're talking about like the victims are also in your family, right? I mean... his behavior claiming it he said he was just curious about girls and that he had gone in and just basically touched them over their clothes while they were sleeping before continuing the first thing was to protect the girls but keep in mind it took three separate incidents for jim bob and michelle to actually do anything and even that was just sending him to a christian getaway camp run by this creep and this, this is not this is not like a licensed therapist it's somebody a, a christian based christian based but i tell you what treatment facility it really had a huge impact on his life. When Megan asked why police weren't involved from the start, Jim Bob responded, As parents, you're not mandatory reporters. The law allows for parents to do what they think is best for their child. Continuing that as long as he was right with God, we felt like the last jurisdiction of who he needed to make things right with was the law. To a lot of people, it Bro really hit him with the fucking, well, you know, it's fine, it's, it's legal. Which it isn't, by the way, but... Really seemed like they were willing to do anything to put the comfort and security of Josh over their other children getting the justice they deserved. Some of the other steps taken by the Duggars seem to involve not letting the boys babysit alone or not allowing kids to play hide-and-seek by themselves, which is just sad and doesn't really indicate to me that Jim Bob or Michelle ever had a ton of confidence that their son had truly been fixed. The parents have continued to downplay Josh's activity by specifying his victims were too young to understand or even remember what happened. Michelle oh, okay. remarking, he knew that it was wrong, but they weren't even aware. To them, they didn't probably even understand that it was an improper touch. Which, I don't know, it doesn't exactly sound as good as you think it does. You were in the news for making a robocall that suggested transgender people might want to go into the bathrooms of locker rooms of girls and that- Oh, come on. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose it. It's literally always this, dude. It's like, these are the motherfuckers who talk about grooming, dude. They're like, oh, if you're gay, or if you're queer, you're grooming the children. If you're around them, it's like, bro, you literally are do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking lord, dude. It's always the same shit, dude. I swear to god, these motherfuckers are always just projecting. Except it's not even projection because, like, they literally don't think what they're doing is grooming. That's the, that's the worst part about it is that, like, they just don't think. Like, they don't. They're literally, you know, oh, we're pro-life. We're godly. What we're doing is actually good and just. That they may be child molesters. Michelle is eventually asked about a particular robocall she had recently made calling trans women pedophiles for wanting to access women's restrooms and locker rooms. I'll play it here, but just know there is a trigger warning for hateful language. Hello, this is Michelle Duggar. I'm calling to inform you of some shocking news that will affect the safety of Northwest Arkansas women and children. Yeah, Michelle Duggar, I'm Michelle Duggar, am on the loose, and so is my oldest child and that's why you should hide your children because i'm michelle duggar i'm coming to get them okay bye children the fayetteville city council is voting on an ordinance this tuesday night that would allow men yes i said men to use women's and girls restrooms locker rooms showers sleeping areas and other areas that are designated for females only I don't believe the citizens of Fayetteville... They hit the transphobia meta eight years early? My friend, that meta never went away. It just become... It became more popular. Like, that meta had always been in existence, but people were more preoccupied with, like, shitting on gay people because it was acceptable to shit on gay people. The only reason why they started hitting the fucking trans meta harder is because it became unacceptable to shit on gay people. So all the people substituted their, like, homophobia to 
uh, exclusively transphobia. That's it. They it, it, transphobia was always the meta. It was just like it was not even like thought about as much because most people were preoccupied with like homophobia because that was what their main concern was. But yeah, homophobes are of course always transphobic too. So would what males with past child predator convictions that claim they are female to have a legal right to enter private areas reserved for women and girls? I doubt that Fayetteville parents would stand for a law that would endanger their daughters or allow them to be traumatized by a man joining them in their private space. We should never place the preference of an adult over the safety and innocence of a child. Parents, who do you Megan accurately pinpoints the optics of this message when considering the predatory past of her own son that she herself had tried to hide, which just leads to a bizarre transphobic tirade from Michelle that gets interrupted by her husband giving us the Webster's definition of a pedophile. I think that protecting young girls and not allowing young men and men in general to go into a girl's locker room is just common sense. But this, this is different because you injected child molestation into it. I think you actually said pedophile in that. And actually a pedophile is a, an adult that preys on children. Joshua was actually 14 and just turned 15 when he did what he did. Oh. And I think the legal definition is 16 and up for being an adult preying on a child. Oh, so never mind. He's safe. He's safe. Child. He's safe. Forget the fact that one of his victims had an it's... age in the single digits, I guess. Let's argue about the semantics of the word pedophile instead. That'll get people on our side and sure won't weird anybody out. Within minutes, Michelle and Jim Bob emphasize there being an agenda against their family, an attack they believe to be motivated by religious and political reasons. Though I'd say these so-called attacks are generally due to the fact that for over for 10 years, Jim Bob, Michelle, and even Josh had I love libertarian debate lords, dude. They're so, they just can't stop. <laughs> and well, actually, have repeatedly posited themselves as the perfect religious family. When you place yourself on that kind of moral pedestal, people develop expectations. And when the facade starts to crack, people begin to doubt everything. How much of it was a lie? Jim Bob and Michelle know there isn't much they can do to change this, so they instead take the defensive, doing all they can to paint themselves as victims of a smear campaign driven by a secular liberal media. Looking to misinterpret their values for the sake of personal gain. The Duggar parents clearly want justice to be served, just maybe not when it means consequences for Josh. Our family is just trying to regroup from these attacks, and when you're in every newspaper and everything throughout the world, I mean, it's been an unprecedented attack on our family, and, and it was actually this information was released illegally. Another part of the Duggars defense at this time had to do with whether or not the police report in question was released illegally. Michelle even insisting her daughters were more victimized by the publication of these documents than Josh's own actions. That breaks my heart for my girls because I think this is such a horrible, they've been victimized more by what has happened in these last couple of weeks than they were 12 years ago because they honestly they didn't even understand or know that anything had happened until after the fact, when they were sh told about it. The Duggars were still determined to prove that the information came out in bad faith. And there's definitely a point there to be made, as no victim should ever be forced to share their story because of a tabloid leak. Jill and Jessa having their trauma aired out on such a public platform with no warning is entirely unfair. But it also seemed like Jim Bob and Michelle were more concerned over the leak itself self happening than the actual information within the leak. The couple teasing legal action just in the interview with Megan. Any chance of you suing her or the city for this disclosure? Yo, why the fuck do the like the the Balenciaga, you know, uh Pedogate Andes focus on shit like this? It's always these motherfuckers that are like the LGBT or being gay around your children. That's grooming. They never fucking care about this shit, dude. It blows my mind. Like this is actual fucking pedophilia, child predation, all this stuff. It just, I, it doesn't. 
Uh, we're talking to some attorneys about that right now, and we'll see. And it's also worth noting here that the four affected daughters did go ahead and sue both Springdale and Washington County officials in 2017, in a case that was dismissed by a judge earlier this year after ruling the sisters had, quote, not presented any direct proof or reasonable inference that officials had revealed private facts about the victims. Since the documents published in Touch redacted the relevant names and information of any minors, the release was legally protected by the Freedom of Information Act. Though that's not to say they were wrong in feeling violated. Jessa and Jill still deserve to have their day in court, as they went on to do their own interview with Megyn Kelly, separate from the parents. They don't have a right to do this. This isn't... We're victims. They can't do this to us. <laughs> And yet they did. And they did. Trying to put myself in their shoes, I can't imagine what it must have been like to relive their trauma on a national stage without any foresight or preparation. By portraying these events from their own perspective, they also provide a glimpse into how the Duggar parents have treated their daughter's abuse from the Holy beginning. Fuck. That it was all nothing more serious than innocent curiosity, and that boys will be boys. It's unfortunate to think this mindset is drilled into kids' heads at such an early age. It downplays what victims go through and prevents Josh from actually getting what he deserves. While not addressing the problem and only keeping the cycle of abuse going, Jill later blaming her brother for allowing his victims to defend him while hiding even more sex-related secrets from the family. Which leads us into the next Duggar scandal, as things weren't about to get any easier for Josh. By August 2015, a hacking group by the name of the Impact Team claimed responsibility for a cybersecurity breach at Ashley Madison, a dating site specifically marketed towards those looking to cheat on their partners. Promoting extramarital affairs and secret flings with the tagline, Life is short, have an affair. The data hack resulted in the information of up to 38 million members being leaked publicly online. With so many people being exposed, it was only to be expected for some celebrities to be named too, the biggest of which being none other than Joshua Duggar. The extensive media coverage to follow only prolonged the Duggar's already nightmarish summer by reporting on the nature of Josh's extramarital activities, which had been hidden from even the family up until this point. Gawker publishing evidence of a credit card belonging to <laughs> They're about to be like, they're about to be like, you know, the child predation is one thing that I can forgive, but cheating on your wife, now that's unholy, okay? We got to do something about that now. <laughs> like, now that right there is unholy and unacceptable, you understand me? Ashley Feinberg, by the way, going crazy. Joshua J. Duggar with a billing address that matched the home of his grandmother, Mary Duggar, in Fayetteville, a house that had been repeatedly shown on their TLC program, also where Josh's wife, Anna, had given birth to their first child. It was reported Josh had paid a little over $1,000 for two separate Ashley Madison subscriptions dating from February 2013 to May 2015, his second account being linked to his own home in Maryland, where he spent his time lobbying against gay marriage, conveniently enough. Apparently he's too busy worrying about two dudes kissing to focus on preserving the sanctity of his own marriage. He All right, he's a good man. He's a good man. He was just trying to make sure the gays were spared, brother, of the, of the treacherous, of the treacherous nature of gay or straight marriage, okay? He was just trying to say, listen, if you don't get legally married by the state, if you don't get legally married by the state, you can cheat all the time on your wife or your wife husband. What's even funnier is it would seem on his second account, he paid an extra $250 for an affair guarantee membership package, which meant that if you had not had an affair after three months of using the site, you'd get your money back, which is so deplorable. Brilliant. That's brilliant though. That is brilliant. That's, you know, you got to get your money back, dude. What do you mean? I really can't even put it into words. The leak also contained the turn-ons and preferences he included in his profile. And after doing some more digging, spectators were also led to this OK Cupid profile that matched both the email. This motherfucker was also catfishing, dude. Your hairline don't look like that. You don't have that body fat percentage, you motherfucker.
He did everything. He did every every no no. Okay, including choosing your fake name to be Joe Smithson. Email and username associated with Josh's Ashley Madison account. But if you'll notice, the name and profile pic here is obviously not Josh Duggar. What it looked like he had done was simply Google the words random guy and use the first pic that popped up to flirt with girls on- Oh, never mind. It wasn't even him. I thought maybe there was a point where he was actually like kind of brawling both OkCupid and Facebook. And looking at these profiles now, they definitely contain all the hallmarks of a catfish account. This bio is so generic and impersonal, it could have only been written by someone like Josh Duggar. A man so discreet, his Ashley Madison username seemingly consisted of Josh the man and ready for this dick. 30 year old man, by the way. Matthew McCarthy, the man who is actually in this photo, was understandably shocked to see his image being thrown into the controversy claiming he had already lost one DJ gig because the club thought he was involved in this scandal. He even pursued legal action against Josh <laughs> that was later tossed out when Josh's defense are- I mean, he does kind of look like him if he wasn't so fucked looking, you know what I mean? That's like non-inbred Josh Duggar in a, in a weird way. I mean, sucks for that guy, but like also it's so funny that- <laughs> He just kind of looks like hot Josh Duggar. <laughs> he looked up random guy and he was like, this guy kind of looks like me. Argued he couldn't be sued in the state of California. It's still very funny that despite being one of the most supposedly online people in the family, Josh really didn't think any of this through, which hasn't changed much in recent years, but I digress. While Josh's response didn't acknowledge the catfishing claims, he did go on to confirm the validity of the Ashley Madison account, calling himself the biggest hypocrite ever in a now deleted statement posted to the family's website. Josh's brief words here also outline another side of himself. The public was previously unaware of, his porn addiction. Admitting he had been unfaithful to his wife and writing about the hurt and reproach he brought to his family through his actions, not just as a teenager, but also now that he had re- Bro, he's leaking extra shit. That's crazy. He broken their trust. He asks for forgiveness from those reading and requests we pray for his wife and family, right before another woman came forward with her own allegations against Josh. Adult star Danica Dillon filing a suit that year accusing what? Josh of sexually assaulting her, causing physical and mental torment. Dylan alleged Josh had quote tried to kill her during one of their sexual encounters, saying he forced her into various positions, threw her around the room, choked and spat on her, before ultimately paying her 1500 bucks. As the story goes, he apologized to her the second time they met, telling her he was such a big fan of her scenes. Josh has since denied these claims though, and Danica eventually dropped the $500,000 charges in 2016, though has maintained her story and has also continued commenting on his recent criminal activity. After three separate sex scandals, some unsavory political endorsements, and a repugnant appearance on Fox News, the Duggar's reputation had never been in a worse place. So in December 2015, in what I feel was an act of sympathy, TLC launched a new Duggar show called Oh, dude, come on, dude. I mean, oh, they did that. They fucking were like, oh, well, we can still milk the ones that, you know, weren't involved. That's crazy, bro. The content never stops. TLC, baby. Content never stops. Content is king, okay? Unless it's the top of the hour where, you know, there's a three-minute ad break. Now, of course, content doesn't stop for those who are subscribed, right? For $5 or for free, you keep that shit rolling, baby. 100%. 100p. For $5 or for free, you can keep the content rolling as well with wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Or you can get gifted a sub if you're not lucky. Here's the three-minute ad break now. 
counting on. God which Frey. was meant to Thank center on the lives of the oldest Duggar girls. After all, the Duggars still Rimmers. had 18 other the kids the to exploit, with or without Josh. Not to mention a slew of grandchildren, since many of their older kids had gone off and started their own families at a pretty young age. With enough time, people even started to come back around on Jim, Bob, and Michelle a little bit, overlooking the past and thinking of Josh to be False. a one-time offense Kakaroto. that occurred over a decade prior. Some people seriously thought Josh had been cured by the religious counseling he received and would be unlikely to offend again. Unfortunately, those people were very, very wrong. Matt Walsh. In November 2019, the Department of Homeland Security executed a full-on search warrant of a used car dealership owned and operated by Josh Duggar in what authorities called an ongoing federal investigation. Of course he had a used car dealership, bro. Oh my god, of course. Investigation. A then spokesperson for the Duggars apparently told the media that the raid had nothing to do with any family member being the target of any investigation of any kind, and that we shouldn't be so quick to buy into all the fake news circulating online. Their words, not mine. Still, the incident immediately hit the headlines, along with rumors this was all connected to a lawsuit regarding real estate fraud. The true details, though, it didn't emerge until April 29th, 2021, when Josh was taken into custody. It was then revealed that Josh's work computer had been linked to downloads of child pornography on several occasions in mid-2019. First flagged by a detective in Little Rock, authorities quickly traced the files to an IP address matching the car dealership, which agents explained to Josh during the raid. Despite having many questions for the police, Josh seemed to know exactly why they were there. With Homeland Security special agent- It's wild to just fucking- Why are we covering- Why are you covering these gross nonsense? Bro, this is- Maybe you were late to the game, but like this is a very famous uh, conservative family. Um, you know, it's, it's like pretty relevant, I think. Also, work computer? That's crazy. Like, what the fuck, my man? At the car dealership, dude? What about the sanctity of the car dealership? The used car dealership? That's crazy. And Jared Faulkner later testifying that before any officials alluded to a child investigation, Josh spontaneously chimed in, what is this about? Has someone been downloading child pornography? I know Josh's slimeball attorney was happy about that little comment. It didn't take long for investigators to search his HP desktop computer in his office and find that it was riddled with illicit material. As director of the Department of Justice's High Technology Investigative Unit, James Fottrell testified in court. Providing irrelevant evidence from his forensic investigation, Fottrell outlined a dire picture of See, if only he watched a quarter pounder video, you know, about how to hide your CP on your fucking computer. He would not have gotten caught this way, you know? Quarter pounder is out there fucking helping dudes like the Duggars out, you know? That's a, that's a callback to an earlier video that we watched, a quarter pounder. But talked about how you should hide C you should hide the CP in your computer back when he was I guess a technician of Josh's illegal activity. For starters, it was confirmed that a program to install a Linux operating system was downloaded to Josh's computer just days before the illicit material was flagged. According to legal documents, Fottrell discovered that the computer's user had partitioned the hard Okay, that's where I draw the line, dude. Linux? Now Nah. This motherfucker learned how to operate Linux just so he could look at CP? That's crazy. That's dedication. That's insane, okay? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Hard drive in two sections. One side of the hard drive was the business side of the computer, which was said to load up Windows 10 like normal and handle all of the dealership's sales. It was the main part of the computer, and it's also where a program called Covenant Eyes had been installed, which according to Insider, is designed to monitor the internet activity of people with pornography addictions, sending internet usage reports to an accountability what? partner, which in this case happened to be Josh's wife, Anna. This is why Josh needed the partition. As 
court records documented, the other side of the hard drive appears to have been set up for the purpose of downloading and viewing child pornography. This side booted up to a Linux-based operating system that was locally installed on the computer. No, this motherfucker actually learned how to use Linux just so he could look at CP, dog. That's crazy. Said when there's a will, there's a way. God damn. On May 13th, 2019, at approximately 1.52 p.m., Mr. Fottrell's forensic imaging of the computer revealed that child pornography was first downloaded on May 14th, 2019, with the help of the Tor browser, whose hidden servers allow users to access the dark web where things like drugs, guns, murder for hire, and at child pornography can be obtained. It was proven in court that the HP computer in question had bookmarked two of these sites that contained lists of Tor's criminal anonymous websites. At that point in the trial, the prosecution was able to place Josh Duggar at the dealership at the exact time the material was being downloaded, thanks to the fact that he literally texted his wife at the exact same time these files were accessed, saying he was going to be home late because he still had a lot of work to do. Via Insider, Fottrell said Duggar's phone sent a message on May 15th saying, I'm on the car lot now. Just minutes after that text, Duggar's Holy desktop shit. computer downloaded a number of child sexual abuse files from the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network uTorrent. So Josh's own text messages made it pretty hard for his defense to haphazardly shift blame onto another employee who must have been trying to incriminate Josh, which officials were quick to dismiss early. So yes, Josh was more than happy to let an innocent co-worker face 40 years in prison if it meant this motherfucker used you torrent dude what the fuck texting the, that you're busy at work while looking at porn the oldest trick in the book bro yeah thank god he didn't have access to the dark rizzler dude <laughs> the dark arts <laughs> sorry i gotta break this up a little bit with like a little bit of humor holy fuck this is some heavy shit <laughs> if you want to cheat <laughs> what, is, what was it if you want to cheat you have to go and and you know pick up a hobby like photography that's why he fucked up <laughs> ay 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 And he could get off scot-free and spend more time with his family, where he'd still be in active danger. As prosecutors had no problem- What was bad about you, Torrent? Well, first of all, I don't understand why he had a Tor browser and, but then he also downloaded child porn off uTorrent. Didn't even know that you could get child pornography off uTorrent. Holy fuck. That's the part that I don't, don't understand. Like uTorrent is BitTorrent, uTorrent, all this shit is like literally for, uh, you know, it, it's, it's basically for, for movies and shit. uTorrent is just a client. Yeah, but like. Oh, you find the torrent links on the dark web and then he moves it over to uTorrent. But it's still, what the fuck? It's like, it's like peer-to-peer -peer sharing of CP. Like, that's insane. You could like, I, I don't know why I thought there would be like a more sophisticated way to like distribute that kind of information considering that it's like insanely illegal. You know what I mean? It's like pretty fucking trackable, right? Like you're literally on the other side. You're like basically doing... I mean, you're sharing CP. No, you don't. Lamau, BitTorrent is totally public. It reveals their IP. It defeats the point of using the dark web if you do that. That's what I'm saying. Your ISP can see your download history with torrents. Yeah. He used the anonymous tab. He would have never been caught. Wait, what? How do you know this chat? What do you mean? Everyone on this fucking... Everyone in this chat at a certain point is like downloaded fucking movies or, 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 you know, like a video game or some shit off of a, a torrent uh, service. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten, I, I've literally gotten fucking uh, flagged by my ISP in the past for downloading movies and shit. Like where I got like a letter in the mail saying what I'm doing is illegal. Yes, ISP actually physically was able to cancel my download once, sent me a warning about piracy. Yeah, it's so whack.
This guy learned Linux torrents and didn't even learn how to use a VPN. I don't think you can hide it with a VPN, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean, at a certain point, it's like you're most likely getting it from a federal agent. It, it's The FBI is the largest, like, trafficker of, of CP on the planet. They own the, the database for the most part. And it's specifically for this purpose. So they can catch you and then turn you and use you as an asset or catch you, turn you, and then throw you in jail. It's a file and it's modified. It most likely won't matter how you get it. This kid I knew had his laptop subpoenaed by Verizon for downloading too many view movies. So glad that scumbag is off the streets. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they took him down, dude. Thank God. I'm proving without a shadow of a doubt that Josh Duggar had been the individual downloading and opening these files. As investigators testified in court, a hard drive was found with remnants of over a hundred images of child abuse material, along with several videos in what Agent Faulkner referred to as the worst of the worst child abuse material he had ever seen in his career as a hardened federal agent who's required to review this kind of stuff for a living. After 12 years of work and over a thousand cases, Faulkner considered Josh to be one of the absolute worst offenders. The prosecution also used Director Fottrell's testimony to build their case, as he has cited evidence of Josh streaming and or downloading the most notorious videos out there, including titles such as Pedo Mom and Daisy's Destruction, which depicts the torturing of an infant. Fott what the fuck? They have titles, dude? What the fuck? Yo! Volcano, 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 volcano. What the Trail fuck? Trail to be the most offensive content he had ever seen in his career. A lot of the material contained girls between the ages of 5 and 10, an age range that some of his own children are in. The word sickening doesn't go far enough in describing the kind of person we're dealing with here. Despite several letters written to the judge by Josh's parents, wife, and in-laws pleading for a softer sentence, these words were ultimately overlooked when Josh was sentenced to 12 years and 7 months in prison, just one day after Josh's failed attempt to overturn the guilty verdict on account of insufficient evidence. Unfortunately for Josh, the evidence proved more sufficient than his laughable defense of trying to throw his own colleagues under the bus. While it may have been delayed for almost two decades, Joshua Duggar finally met his long overdue fate and will be spending over 150 That's crazy. This motherfucker gets 12 years, but if you get hit with a third strike, you're permanently, you're in perma jail. Like if you're rich enough, if you're coming from a family that can like protect you for long enough, you can literally avoid getting any strikes on your fucking record and you only go to 12 years, you only go to jail for 12 years when that's your background. That's crazy. The American criminal justice system is fucked, dude. It is fucking insane. 50 months in federal prison. Even then, when he does get out, he'll only be allowed to see his seven kids in the presence of an approved list of supervisors. All to say that life for Josh as he once knew is effectively over. Prosecutors writing at the end of the trial that there is simply no indication that Duggar will ever take the steps necessary to change this pattern of behavior and address his predilection for minor females, indicating that the pattern of abuse Josh Josh has expressed for all these years has in no way changed or been appropriately corrected, leading anyone to wonder just how different things could have been. Welcome back. We're here with Josh Duggar. Uh, you were work with FRC, so tell us a little bit about what's happening here with the Values Voters Summit this week. Well, we're extremely excited to have, you know, really what I think has been called the premier conservative event in the country. And it's basically people coming together, a lot of people of faith and people that understand what made America great and what's going to continue. I heard back from Joseph who we watched yesterday. It was quite something to wake up to. Thanks for recommending the video to him. I'm immensely grateful for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. I remember watching a son stream a few times back in the dark days of the first lockdown. It feels quite bizarre that he watched something I created. Fuck yeah. What a nice guy. Continue to make America uh, really the, the best country in the entire world. And the laboratory for that is in our own homes, in our own communities, and really in our own hearts. Well, Bro, he sounds like every fucking grimy piece of shit conservative fuck. I swear to God. He sounds like every fucking 
awful conservative monster, dude. Did did Jabri actually ever mention Matt Walsh's defense for uh, Duggar's molestation, sister molestation? Because before Matt Walsh led anti-trans, oh, he did? Oh, yes, he keep watching. Oh, okay, because I... Well, I don't think Josh's spirituality is the reason he did what he did. It's clear to me the culture surrounding Josh and his parents allowed him to get away with it for far too long. Jim Bob neglected to contact outside authorities several times, all while his daughters continued being abused in their own house. And the belated treatment Josh did receive just wasn't enough for him to break such a deplorable cycle, finally landing him in jail where he belongs. I can't help but think this could have gone differently had his behavior not been repeatedly excused and downplayed by his parents and even political allies of the family, with former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee who defended the Duggars in 2016. You don't know what those parents did and how they worked to try That's to crazy. take care. Of their entire family. And conservative blogger Matt Walsh even, using the story as an opportunity to slam progressives as being the real hypocrites, writing, let me be honest with you. Yep, that's Matt Walsh, baby. He did. He did give a fucking Matt Walsh uh, mention. Remember, transphobic ass Matt Walsh literally said progressives are the real fucking hypocrites here. With you. If my own son, God forbid, came to me and admitted to doing what Josh Duggar did, I don't know that I'd immediately run to the cops. Would you? Is it really that simple? The decision to have your child arrested as a sex offender would be an automatic thing for you? Really? It's this kind of dismissive language that both invalidates victims of child sexual trauma and allows their abusers to continue down on a path of destruction. What's possibly more disturbing than anything is this excerpt from a 1990 ATI lesson booklet detailing the story of a young boy who abused his younger siblings, in which the boy blames his behavior on a lack of moral purity and the immodest nature of his siblings even. The excerpt reading, my younger sisters used to wear dresses often, but as they were young and not aware of modesty, they did not behave in them as they should. Little people do not realize their nakedness right away. Well, this is oh my god, dude. It's just so much fucking evil in the world, brother. That is holy shit. It's just one of thousands. He, he, bro, how the fuck do you slut shame a baby, dude? How do you victim blame a fucking baby? That's like, like, I don't think even 4chan is that fucking deprived you know what i mean like there's a lot of weirdos there's a lot of like incels and shit they're and they're crazy and they're violent they have violent psychotic tendencies and whatnot but like that is an insane thing to say oh my god Thousands of documents to come out of the ATI program over the years, it certainly echoes a familiar sentiment we've heard from the Duggars. Throughout years of Duggar family country- Why are people saying volcano? It's just that old meme. Controversies, countless mistakes could have been avoided. Mistakes that ended up perpetuating a cycle of abuse, affecting countless people by proxy. Jim Bob and Michelle, though, seems to care more about their family looking like stars on TV than actually addressing the real issues at the root of their household. It all comes down to maintaining an image of purity above all else, even when real criminal activity can be found lurking behind the scenes. Placing yourself on a public pedestal despite knowingly protecting a criminal in your own family is bad enough, but it's tempting to paint yourself as a beacon of spirituality in the process is even worse. As much as I know the Duggars will probably try to continue existing- Conservatives have so many, like, people like this in their fucking ranks that just kind of get forgotten, you know what I mean? All the while, they're all, like, pointing to fucking liberals and Democrats as being, like, pedophiles and groomers and shit. It's crazy. In the public eye, the fact remains that they've already shown us exactly who they are when the cameras are off. Keep on, keep on
God damn, dude. He did it again. Jobbery. That was hard to watch. I'm not going to lie. That was fucking insane. Do the call to Elon Musk. We already watched it. That was so good. I, I 